So thank you so much for um, the interview today. Um, myself, my readers and viewers, our readers and viewers really appreciate you coming, uh, uh, allowing us to come to your office and meet with you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Matt. All right, great. Thank you so much, Minister. Um, I'd like to start uh, with a general question. Um, Indonesia's digital economy is growing really rapidly, and there's an internet boom going on in Southeast Asia. And as you know, of course, more tweets go out from Jakarta than any other city, and Indonesia is a very big customer of Facebook. In, in general terms, what do you see as the long-term potential of Indonesia's digital economy, let's say the next uh, five and even ten years forward? Uh, we are focusing on the e-commerce yeah, in, uh, in the digital space particularly. You know. Of course, it's not only uh, e-commerce, it's an applications. There is another, also another application, but it has to be by ecosystem. Uh, I always say by DNA, because device, network, and applications. What we are discussing on the digital economy, mostly or actually on the e-commerce things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where in 2014, the e-commerce value in Indonesia already reached 12 billion. Last year, it's already reached more than 18 billion, probably up to 20 billion. Mm -hmm. And with this uh, roadmap e-commerce that's already endorsed by the government, then it is projected by 2020, the e-commerce in Indonesia will reach uh, 130 billion US dollars. Okay, and that's that's from from how much today? Uh, last year's uh, reached more than 18 billion US dollars. Uh. Okay, so 18 billion to, you said 120? 120 billion to 2020, uh, four years down the road. Okay, that, that's a, a big jump. How Indeed. do you, um, what, what do you base that on? Uh, number one, yeah, number one, uh, we have to address several issues. Uh, uh, so that's why we prepare our own uh, roadmap of e-commerce in Indonesia, which mm. will address, uh, among others, are uh, financing issues, funding mm. issues. And then uh, also in the taxation issues, mm -hmm. and then logistic issues. You know that uh, logistic is one of the uh, contributing the high of high cost economy of uh, in Indonesia. I think, you know. mm -hmm. We have also addressing the human capital resources. We have also to address uh, the infrastructure issues, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, cyber security issues. Mm -hmm. And we have 31 initiative on it, here, which is uh, probably I, I can share with you on the funding, fund, financing issues, you know, that from the startup company, the government is considering to allocate some uh, subsidized micro loans into the startup company. But it cannot structure as loans from the banks. It has to be structured, converted into the ventures capitals uh, or uh, venture capitals things, you know. This is one of the, of the issue on the financing. And then on the uh, other things, on the, still on the financings, we are opening uh, our market. Uh, in the past, uh, until probably one and a half months ago, uh, foreigners are not allowed to have some uh, shares in the e-commerce in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But right now, particularly focusing on the marketplace, foreigners are allowed to have some shares. Here. But for the uh, company startups, basically with a net worth uh, maximum to 10 billion uh, rupiah, or more or less 800,000, uh, US dollars mm -hmm. are reserved for Indonesians for small medium enterprise you know? but uh, between uh, 800,000 to 8 million uh, US dollars uh, foreigners are allowed to have uh, for up to 49 percent and above uh, uh, 8 million US dollars foreigners are practically allowed to have uh, up to 100 uh, percent minus one shares you know? okay. this is only the ini, the, apa, the the we are opening up basically the 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 uh, investments to Indonesia is not only that one. We have two things. Uh, one investor uh, put their investment, put their money in Indonesia. They have to think also at the same time what will be the exit strategy. Mm. So that's why we are discussing right now with the uh, financial services authority. Uh, is something like uh, stock exchange uh, supervisory body, and also with the Indonesia stock exchange for having some sort of quote unquote uh, technology board. Mm -hmm. Probably within one or two years down the road, mm -hmm. we are setting this regulation. So this will give also uh, venues for foreign investors, an option for investors uh, for exit through the capital market. We really would like to see exiting strategy through the capital markets. There's a lot of uh, reasons. Number one, governance process. Most most of the IP, uh, apa, listed company are better than than uh, uh, others. You know. Second is also will allow the people in Indonesia to have some or to participate as a shareholders in the mm. 
Okay, so you're saying when you when you're um, because of basically what you're saying is because of your opening up the digital economy, that's what will cause this jump in transactions. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. And does that also have to do with the fact that um, we're we're seeing a very large increase in the middle class in Indonesia? Of course, we have uh. demography bonus, right? Mm. And demography bonus has to be utilized, you know. Uh. Okay, and okay. and uh, uh, the lifestyles of the people who lives in the uh, urban also it's now is changed, you know. And look at right now in Indonesia, if you are traveling to uh, another cities, yeah, uh, by plane, yeah, by an airline, yeah. In the past, people went to the travel bureaus and uh, the travel bureaus issued the vouchers that can be redeemed in the airport. This is no longer applicable right now. Mm. If you also stay in the hotel in other uh, city. Uh, in the past, the travel bureau will issue the voucher and you uh, say redeem it in the receptionist. It's no longer available right now. Mm. So those are the, apa, the, the uh, change in the lifestyles will also uh, boost the uh, digital economy, particularly the e-commerce in Indonesia. Okay. okay.